Yeah, the youth camp, youth camp coming up, and if you feel like the Lord has laid it upon your heart to sponsor one of these children, then you can do that. We definitely want to give you that opportunity to be a blessing. So I want to preach to you out of Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. If you are able, I know we've stood a lot today, if you're able, physically able, would you please stand and honor God's word? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. I've been thinking about this scripture and this thought all this week, and I sincerely want to give you what God has laid upon my heart, and I just want to preach to you this morning, and there's a lot that's going on nowadays in our culture, and um, there's a lot that we need to know as Christians that, um, you know, God's still God. God's still on the throne, and us as Christians, we have to make sure that we're still doing what we're supposed to do, and that's praise God, that's stay in the Word of God, that's stay in church, keep a right attitude, and, and namely, be a light into this world. That's, that's so important for us. It's easy to cover our light. It's easy to not be in the right spirit or not be in the right attitude, but that's why we need the Holy Ghost in our life, because He'll push us along and help us and convict us when we're not where we need to be because I'll tell you I'll be the, I'll be honest with you and I'll be the first one to tell you that I hadn't made it yet and I'm not all I should be and that's what life is all about it's growing and it's developing and it's a journey so let's look at the word of God and I pray that God would give you what you need from the word today Genesis 3 verses 1 through 9 if you're there say amen, amen. the Bible says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. See, Satan had entered into this serpent here. And the first thing that the devil wants to do is question God, and question the word of God. And this is what we see. So basically the devil says, Does, did, did God really say what he said? Did God really say that? Did he really mean what he says? Now verse number 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not touch of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. See, God says one thing, but the devil says another. He's a father, he's a liar, he's the father of lies from the beginning. For God does know that in, he says, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened. And that you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. This is such a disobedience from God. And verse number 7 says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And this is, this is very critical here, this scripture. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Something I thought about as I read this scripture, God knew that they sinned. God knew that they messed up. God knew that they threw it all away. But yet God, still calling out, still calling out, still saying, Adam, where are you? And he was calling out because God wanted to make it right. God wanted Adam and Eve to make it right. Three characters that are in this story. First thing in the Bible, it hits you. You've got God, you've got the devil, and you've got humanity. I want to preach this morning on a simple message, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd help me this morning as I preach this word. I pray, God, that you'd give me a double portion of your anointing. I pray that the Spirit of God would work through me. And, God, that you would do your work. God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. And I pray that the church would receive the words of God. And I ask that your will would be done. Bless our altar service. God, there's folks in this building that you know and we know too that need, need a touch, need help. And we need prayer. And we need your help. But, God, I pray that we'd understand that you are for us, not against us. There's an enemy out there who's against us. And, God, we stand in the middle of it all. And we want to do the best for you. We love you in Jesus' name. And everybody shouts amen. 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 You can be seated. I, I need you to help me preach this morning, if you will, church. It's okay every once in a while to say amen and back me up. I do better when you do that. 
And believe it or not, I'll preach a little bit shorter whenever you back me up real good. So, all right, yeah, let's keep that going. When I get in the middle of this thing, I want to hear those amens too. <laughs> so first of all, I'm preaching on the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you can deduce pretty quick which is which. So I'm going to start with the bad. The first thing I want to talk to you about the bad, give you the bad news first. Did you know that there is a devil out there? There is an enemy out there. And you've got to know, you've got to know that you do have an enemy. And as innocent in life as you think that you might be and as sweet and pretty and kind and gentle as you think that you are. And you might think nobody dislikes me. Nobody's against me. Nobody hates me. There is an individual that does hate you. They want you to die wants you to be dead, wants your soul to be destroyed. And, and this is something that a lot of people just don't really realize is that you do have an enemy. The bad one is Satan, the devil, the enemy. And you must know that you do have an enemy. Did you know that there is an evil force against you? There's an evil force against your home. There's an evil force against anything that you've ever counted good. And the words of Jesus Christ are very critical in understanding this this morning. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, The thief, the devil, the enemy comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The Bible says that this, this scripture means that he has one goal, one mission, one objective. The devil wants to steal from you anything that you hold dear. Destroy your life and your soul and to kill you. There is a devil out there that hates your guts. Why? Because you are a child of God. And you've got to understand that. You've got to understand that. I'm in the military and one thing that we, we understand is that that we are not just standing and there, there's no enemies around. The United States has an enemy. And you've got to know who your enemy is. Could I have an amen? amen? Satan's objective is to steal, kill, and to destroy. And you and I, like the Bible tells us, we cannot afford to be ignorant of the enemy's, the devil's devices or his tactics. If he could, if he could, he would take you out, take you down. And drag you away from all the goodness of God. You need to know today that there is someone against you. And Jesus spoke about this. Jesus spoke about this enemy. He told Peter. He said, Peter, Satan has desired to have you and to sift you like wheat. And what that means here, Jesus is saying, the devil wants nothing more for you, Peter, than to tear you to pieces. To shake you. Your faith so that you don't believe in God anymore. And if Satan desired to have Peter, how much more do you think that Satan desires to have you? To shake you, to rip apart your life, to rip apart everything good that God has given you and to strip away the peace and joy and blessings that the Lord has given you and anything that you've worked for. They sing that song that God is, and the devil hates that because when we sing songs like that, you know what we're doing? We're saying that everything, God, that you've given me in my life, I attribute it to you. I point heavenward and say, God, I'm nothing without you. And let, let me tell you, the devil hates that when you say that I love God and I acknowledge God and I give my heart sincerely to the Lord. You've got an enemy who's against you, and you need to know this today. That you will have a fight against the enemy your entire life. And those of us that are young, I used to think whenever I were to get older that things would get easier and easier. But I'm going to tell you, the older I get, it gets harder and harder because I put up more of a fight. Temptations come all the time. Problems come all the time. Struggles come and battles and difficulties come all the time. I'm going to fight until they lay me in a casket and I go to heaven. But what you've got to do is understand you've got to fight and fight the good fight of faith. At the end of his journey, at the end of his life, Paul said there's one thing that, that says, catalogs all I've done. He's writing to Tim. Timothy, I have fought the good fight of faith. Let me tell you, when you get home today, you're going to fight against the enemy. On Monday morning, you're going to fight against the enemy. Next week, even on vacation, you're going to fight against the enemy. Listen, because you've got something the devil wants to steal from you. No robber out there robs an empty bank they rob a bank because they know there's money in it you've got treasure in your heart you've got blessings in your life and the devil wants nothing more than just like that snake in the garden of eden to slither his way into your life and snatch away all good things that god's given you but you've got to do like paul and say i'm going to finish my course i'm going to run my race i'm going to grab my sword of the spirit i'll have my shield of faith i'll put on my helmet of salvation 
nation, and I will fight for God. Because listen, there is a good God, but there's a bad devil. I was talking a couple years ago to a guy on the Air Force Base, came and saw me. And he said, I don't believe in God. So I said, well, what do you think about everything that's going on? And he says, it's almost like there's an evil force. He says, it's almost like there's an evil force that is against, that's, that's against everything that's good. And I was thinking, well, duh. If there's an evil force, there's a good force. And I thank God. I thank God for the good force because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Praise be to God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you will. Amen. Amen. You will have to fight for your peace. You're going to have to fight for your home. You will have to fight for your marriage. You will have to fight to make it to heaven. You are not going to slip out of this world and wake up in heaven on accident. You're not going to wake up in heaven and say, wow, I can't believe I made it here. What a, what a wonder that I made it here. No, you're going to go to heaven on purpose. You're going to go to heaven because you dug in your heels. Because you pulled yourself up by the bootstraps at times. Because you decided that you were going to be a tough woman of God and a tough man of God and stick it out to the end. You're not going to be one of those that just hold on to the plow and then whenever the winds come, you turn loose and say, well, it's too hard. I can't make it. I can't do it. No, you're going to be a man of God who's got a backbone. A woman of God who's strong in the Lord and in the power of his might I'm going on with God oh you gotta say that yes yes there is an enemy fighting against me but I've got God he's on my side and I'm on the side of the Lord and greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world just as much this is a quote I read just as much as God loves you there's an enemy out there that hates you. You got to know. You got to know that. Because you can't just drift ar around in life. There is no middle ground when it comes to God. There is, no, there is no middle ground when it comes to your eternity. It's like riding on a boat. You get out there on the boat. You are going to go whichever way the wind blows. There is no such thing as neutral. You cannot just stand still in life and just wait. You've got to be progressively moving forward with God. Could I have an amen? It's not enough just to know that there's a bad one out there, an evil force. You've got to know how to win and fight against the enemy. Now, the Bible tells us in James chapter 7, gives us a perfect recipe on how to fight against the devil. Number one, James says, submit yourselves to God. You can't win against the enemy until you realize that you have absolutely no victory within yourself. In any victory that we would ever have comes from God. The enemy was defeated that day on Calvary when Jesus died on the cross and said, it is finished. They put him in a grave and three days later, he came out of the grave victorious and only because of what Jesus did for you and for me. That's how we know that we can have victory. Number one, submit yourself to God. If you don't submit yourself to God in life, then you will be tossed around with every wind of doctrine and every little storm that comes your way. Number two, James says, resist the devil. You've got to put up your defenses. Push it back against the enemy. If you've got to run for your life, if that's what it takes, resist the devil. Say no to the enemy. Put up blockades in your life and the devil will flee. Because what he does, he realizes that you're going to put up a fight and he'll find his way to the next weak one. But you're not going to be weak. You're going to be strong in Jesus' name. You know why you're going to be strong? Because you are confident in God. And God has the ability to carry you through and you've got a pastor every day that's praying for you. You've got a church that's walking with you. And you've got God who's walking right side of you too. And whenever the devil comes your way, and he will. He will. On your job. He'll tempt you. Voices. Everybody's got voices that are coming to their mind. You just got to tell the devil to get out of my mind. Get out of my car. Get out of my job. Get away from my family. Sometimes you got to tell the devil just to shut his mouth because if there's anything that he does he'll run his mouth yes bless her jesus 
So, she was looking at me kind of funny. So, I'm glad she's moved up on the front row. It's good to embarrass your kids every once in a while. We used to be in church and we had a, I told you this story before. We had a brother who would do the preliminaries, preliminary remarks. And he heard online or on TV somewhere, you know, they used to say, turn to your neighbor and say this, turn to your neighbor and say that. And we do a little bit of that, but we don't like to get too carried away with it. So he heard about on TV somebody was doing this. And he says, sometimes you just got to tell the devil to shut up. And uh, he said, turn to your devil and say, shut up. And uh, I turned to my friend who was, we was on the stage playing the guitar. And I said, shut up, you devil. <laughs> That's what everybody else is doing in the church. So sometimes what you really truly have to do is whenever you feel this negative spirit, whenever you feel a spirit that's dragging you down, whenever you feel a despairing spirit or a gloomy spirit, negative thoughts come to your mind and life. What you need to do is rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. There's been many times in, at night, there's been many times in my life, see, the devil will come to you at night. You know that? How many's ever been there before? Fear. Fear will jump on you just like a frog will jump into a pond. And what you have to do sometimes is you've got to get up in Jesus' name and rebuke the devil. There's been times in my life that I wake up in the middle of the night. Everybody else is snoring and snoozing. But I, there's something going on. It's called spiritual warfare. And what you've got to do, I place my hands on my daughter's door. I say, I rebuke any foul spirit in Jesus' name. And, and sometimes you just got to do that as a man of God, as a woman of God. It's just like the old days. They used to get the broom. We used to have those uh, meetings in people's houses. And I remember you used to get the broom and you had to physically, this is something they did did back in the day because they realized that there really is an evil spirit out to kill you destroy you steal from you and they said what I'm going to do is get my room and I'm sweeping the devil out sweeping the devil out and you know that's what you've got to do in your life at times is to sweep the enemy out because if you don't become what God has you to be with some backbone and spiritual authority he will run over you he will pulverize you and you will be left, left sifted like wheat but I don't have any intentions to do that how about you somebody shout amen See, this is what I want to tell you. God is not your enemy. God is not your enemy. Could I have an amen? amen? Satan is your enemy. Satan is your enemy. So many people believe that God is against them. God is not the troublemaker. God's not a troublemaker. There is a God. There's a good God. And there is a bad devil. There is an evil, satanic, wicked force that causes trouble. Some people take the attitude, why God? Why God did you do this to me? Why God did you send this sickness upon me? Why God are things so hard for me in my life? Don't be blaming God for the things that the devil brought your way. Somebody say amen. amen. God's not the troublemaker. You know who the first troublemaker was? His name was Satan because he's the one who came into the Garden of Eden with his lies. And ever since then, spewing his lies, ever since then, sin and the ripple effect of sin have gone on throughout, through, throughout humanity. Satan said, did God really say that? And his lies are still ringing out today. Get, did God really say that? Did God, does the Bible really say that? Do I really have to live like that? Is that really the way it is? Yes, it really is because that's what God says. And the same exact spirit is fluent today. It is flowing today. Did God really mean what he said? Oh, 2,000 years ago, you're going to be a, believe a Bible that's 2,000 years old? Of course I am. Because the Bible says that his word is forever settled in heaven. And I know it by experience that God is a good God. Somebody praise God. <laughs> Satan's the father of lies. Now let me tell you, church. God is not your enemy. He's not your enemy. Satan. Is your enemy. It's like the bullfighter. The bullfighter had the red flag, and the bull was out there in the pen, and the bull, he saw that red flag, and the bullfighter there waving it. And the bull, he said, that flag is my enemy. So every time that bull, he would charge that flag, and just at the split second, that bullfighter would pull that thing out of the way. And what the bullfighter would do, he'd take his sword out, and he'd stab the bull. Stab the bull. Happened over and over and over again. That bull says, that flag is my enemy. The bullfighter, he'd wave that red flag. Are you with me, church? And that bull, he would just charge that thing. And at the last minute, again, pull, and then he'd stab him in the side. That flag was not the enemy. 
You know who the enemy was? It was the bullfighter. Let me tell you what. The devil would like nothing more for you to believe that God is your enemy. God's sending you all your storms. God's sending you all your troubles. God's sending you all your problems. God is not your enemy. Satan is your enemy. Today I'm talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. The bad one in your life. The bad one in your life is the devil. And he brings along with him all the bad things of society. All the bad things that you're seeing in the culture now. The, the spirit of confusion that comes straight from the enemy. And you've got to know. You've got to know that there is a bad enemy that wants to draw you away from all the good things that God has given you. The Bible says the people that do know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. If you want to be strong in God and be overcoming and be victorious, there's some things you got to know. Number one, you got to know that there is somebody against you. Could you say amen? amen. Number two, there is the ugly. There is the ugly. And please, please don't get upset with me this morning. I hate to say it. And I don't mean any offense. And I hope that you don't take this the wrong way. But you know who the ugly one is? Sister Jean, did you? She's the only one with enough courage to say it. <laughs> we know who the good is. We know who the bad is. The ugly, that's me. We all have to say that. We all have to say that. It's me. It's you. Now, I'm not talking about physical appearance. That's not what I'm talking about. Now, granted, I've met some people that they look like they had been beat with an ugly stick. <laughs> I mean, you have too. And I may be one of those in your opinion, but it's all relative, you know. Everybody's got their opinions. I've met people, they look like they fell off the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. <laughs> And you know what I'm talking about? I'm not necessarily talking about that. I'm talking about ugly attitudes, ugly spirits, ugly dispositions, ugly speech, ugly sin. You with me this morning? Ugly transgressions, ugly iniquities. We the ugly ones. I'm the ugly one. But the good thing is the Bible says that he'll beautify the meek with salvation. And no, no matter how ugly your spirit is, no matter how ugly your heart is, no matter how rotten your soul used to be, God can wash you. God can cleanse you. God can make you whiter than snow. The Bible says in Isaiah 1 and 18, it says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I'll make them as wool. The good thing about God is that God has the ability to take something that is ugly as sin and turn it into that is beautiful and righteous and holy and good and bright. I thank God that, you know, the Bible says... Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And you might think to yourself, oh, I'm a nobody and a nothing, and I don't have any value. God can reverse it. God can change it. God's got a way of making things different and making things better. One of the first things I remember in school, I remember, I remember it vividly. I was sitting in school at Fuquay Elementary School, and they taught us about the caterpillar. And I sat there, and I said, wow. And you know what that caterpillar does, and I've told you, this before but I tell you again because it's so it's so important that old ugly caterpillar you know what he does all his life is he crawls around in the dirt and in the mud that's all he does down low as low can get but one day something stirs up in the heart of that caterpillar and he decides that I don't want to be an old ugly worm of the dirt anymore so he says I'm going to climb up the tree he climbs up the tree climbs up the tree then he finds himself a branch and there he goes he's spinning a web like a 
a cocoon, a chrysalis, I think is what it's called, right? He spins a cocoon around him. And there he is in that cocoon. And he waits and he waits and he waits and he waits. You know, that's the way it is with us. You know, you just don't get saved and then t the next day you're working miracles, church. Somebody say amen. He waits and he waits and he waits in that cocoon. And what happens is he dies to himself. He dies to his old life. And before long, what happens is that cocoon starts to move. In. It starts shaking. It starts bouncing. And something new comes out of that cocoon. A new creature And it's a butterfly And he sticks his wings out there And he begins to flap those wings And off to the heavens he goes That's the way it was with me That's the way it is with you Because every one of us We were ugly in our sins We were ugly in our iniquities We were ugly in our transgressions We were low like the low worm of the dirt but one day something stirred in our hearts and I remember when it was for me I was 14 years old and I heard the word of God because the Bible says faith comes by, by by hearing and hearing by the word of God and I heard the word of God and I was sitting right about here at the, at the church in Fuquay and I got up to my seat and I went down here and I went and prayed at the altar and it was almost like I got in my little cocoon but I wasn't wrapped up in a cocoon I was wrapped up in the blood of Jesus I was wrapped up in love I got to the foot of the cross and I said God forgive Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my mistakes. Forgive me for my past. Forgive me for my life. And I got wrapped up with people that were praying for me. I got wrapped up in the love of God and the forgiveness of God. And you know what? I came up and I rose up out of that place a new creature. A new creature. And I, I, did, I wasn't a butterfly, but no, I came up as an eagle. And I've been flapping my wings for God ever since. And that's what happens. God can take somebody. Oh, that's ugly and lost and has no hope, has no prospects, has no future, had no potential, none, none, overlooked. God can change it, transform it. Oh, thank God that he knows how. God is, I think God's about the only one that knows how to take something that's ugly. He's the only one that can take something that's ugly and turn it into something that's beautiful. He can make us a new creature. Somebody praise God in the house of the Lord this morning. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Last point I want to tell you about is the good. You know who the good is? It's not me. I'm trying. I'm not there yet. It's not the devil. He'll never be good. But it's God. It's Almighty God. I want you to know today that we serve a good God. We do serve a good God. Matter of fact, we serve a great God. The Bible says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Not just a good God, we serve a giving God. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son that you might have everlasting life. A forgiving God. A loving God. A rewarding God. The Bible says those that come to God must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him we serve a good God we have a good God I thought about that scripture God knew Adam in and out God knew his sin God knew his mistake but yet God still called to him Adam where are you do you remember the day whenever God called your name and you said here I am you think about how low you were you think about your mistakes and sins where you were. Isn't it a marvel of it all that God would still call our names? Oh, that's the goodness of God. That's the mercy of God that I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything at all, but God still loved me. And God pulled me out of a miry clay. And he's the only one that could. And he set me upon a solid rock and established my goings. And I've been serving the Lord ever since. And you've been serving God ever since. Maybe today you feel like you're ugly. You're lost. You're without. You're undone without. God and his son maybe you feel like the devil and his wickedness has been beating you and berating you and you feel like you can't escape let me tell you you can because there's one who will pull you out there is one who will rescue you there is one and his name is God amen stand with me if you were will if you will I want to tell you church that God God is not against you God is not against you God's for you he wants you to win. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to make it to heaven. 
the scripture says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If you've made mistakes in your life, you know what you got to do? You got to get it right with God. And you just got to go on. You got to keep on marching, keep running for the Lord, keep soaring and flying for God. If you've had troubles, if you've had battles, if you've had difficulties, all you need to do, just turn them over to God. Let me tell you, church, God's for you. He's not against you. I'll say that again. God is for you. He is not against you. God wants you to have everlasting life. God wants you to have abundant life. God wants you to have victorious life. Because He is the good one. Maybe today you feel like you're the bad or you're the ugly. You're not good enough. God can change that. And God can bless you. Heavenly Father, I do love you today. I pray, God, if there's anybody in this building here who's not saved, who's not on the right path, who hasn't made that decision to follow you, Jesus. I pray that the Holy Ghost of heaven would convict. God, you bring conviction. I pray, Jesus, that your will would be done. Your will would be done. Not my God, mine, God, but your will, Jesus. I pray, God, if there's anybody in this building here who needs to rededicate their heart to you, God, that they would do so, God. And this day would be a new day. If there's anybody in here this morning, Lord, who is struggling with sin, struggling with things, don't feel like they can make it or, or do any better, and the devil has convinced them that they'll always stay in that rut, God, I ask you, Jesus, today that you would help us to get out of it. Because, Lord, when you do the work, we won't say that it was us and us alone. We'll point it back to you and say, God, it was because of you, Jesus. I pray, Father, that your will would be done and you bless this altar service. God, there are folks here this morning who are carrying heavy luggage, heavy baggage, heavy sorrows. I ask you, Lord, that we would do like the scripture says, to cast all of our cares on you, for you care for us. I ask all this in your mighty, precious name, in Jesus' name. I want you, church, if there's anybody in here who needs to get saved, anybody in here who needs to rededicate their life to God, or anybody in here who just needs God to do that good thing, that good thing for you, I want you, if you will, make your way up to this altar. Come on, church, all those who will, all those who will this morning. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. Oh God, I pray that your will will be done. Not my will be done. Jesus, as we fight, as we fight the good fight of faith, we need your support. We need your backup. We need your help. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Bless our God. Touch her, Jesus. Have your way, God. My Lord, we turn it over Change to you, God. Who I, I turn am. it all over to you, Jesus. I belong to I you. I surrender it to you, God. The I praise you, Jesus. Can. And I pray, Father. Take what Sister. I have. My God, Change my God, my God. Take care of her, Jesus. I belong oh, to God, you. Oh, God, I pray that your will will be done. The enemy can. Take what I have. Let's pray together. Touch this around. I belong to you. You call.